Hi, I'm Brian Freer, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, plant structure and transport of materials. We're going to look at roots, stems, and leaves in this lecture, and also how materials get transported through all of those. Alright, first up, roots. Here is a vertical cross-section of, well, your generic root. At the bottom we have a root cap. This is a hardened group of cell that's going to be doing a lot of the pushing when the root elongates. It also secretes a lubricant so that the root can move more easily through the soil. Immediately above the root cap we have the meristem. The meristem produces new cells and allows the root to, if you will, elongate. Naturally, it's in the zone of elongation, which moves along with the meristem. Immediately above the zone of elongation, we have the zone of maturation. When cells are far enough from the meristem, they start maturing and getting their own particular job, if you will. They'll become parts of the xylem, the phloem, maybe they'll add to the parenchyma, which is going to provide extra support and storage. Maybe it'll help protect the root with the endodermis. Maybe it'll even become a root hair and help absorb extra water and nutrients. All right, that's a vertical cross-section. We're going to start looking at horizontal cross-sections. Now, there are some differences between monocots and dicots, two different kinds of plants, when it comes to roots. All right, first up, the monocot. These have a fibrous root set up. Their roots, if you look at them, are going to be spread kind of everywhere. And here's a horizontal cross-section of one of those. Okay. On the outside, you have something called the epidermis, if you will, outer skin. This provides most of the protection from the stuff on the outside. Immediately inside the epidermis, you have the cortex. This is made up of parenchyma cells. This is used for storage. Other than that, not too much. All right. Now we reach something known as the endodermis. This is interesting because it separates the steel from the rest of the plant. No, they don't have metals in them. The steel is just the name for the center. And here's where the cool stuff happens. First up is this ring of cells known as the pericycle. The pericycle grows. It allows the root to get thicker as opposed to just longer with the meristem. Now immediately inside that we have phloem. If you remember, phloem moves minerals and nutrients. Then we have a ring of xylem. This one moves water. And here's something that die cuts don't have in the very center, the pit. This is parenchyma just like the cortex. Just keep in mind that die cuts won't have that. Speaking of die cuts, let's move on to those. You'll find a lot of structures are the same in die cuts, but organized differently. Again, we have the epidermis, which does the same thing, the cortex, which does the same thing. The endodermis, which also defines the steel. And we also have the pericycle, which allows the root to get thicker. I know, lots of similar stuff. Here's where the divergence is. See, instead of xylem being arranged in a ring around the center like it was in the monocots, it's arranged in a cross. And everything else that is not xylem is going to be flown. All right, that's roots. Let's move on to stems. Stems. First, I'm going to explain something called a vascular bundle. This is just a generic vascular bundle. Cortex on the outside, xylem, phloem, and some more brown tissue, parenchyma, storage and support on the inside. The xylem and phloem are the important parts. That's the actual vascular tissue that's going to help move stuff through the plant, kind of like our circulatory system. In a monocot, we have these vascular bundles, I drew them as circles, spread throughout the stem. Whereas in dicots, we have them spread in a very organized ring. Now, everything that is not going to be a vascular bundle in the stem is going to be a, a cortex. It's going to be ground tissue, parenchyma, storage again. Okay, that's stems. Let's move on to leaves. These are, in my opinion, the most interesting and the coolest. These perform photosynthesis. Leaves are flat and broad, so they can bring in a lot of sunlight. If it's not autumn or winter when all leaves are dead, go outside, grab a leaf, take a look at it right now. You're going to notice on the top, you're going to have some veins. Those are vascular bundles, things like xylem and phloem. But you'll also notice on top that it's very waxy. Why? This prevents water from escaping. Water does not move through waxy stuff because it's a fat and that repels water. But underneath, it's not very waxy at all. We're going to look at that right now. Here is a cross-section of leaf. I know, biologists love cross-sections. Up on top we have the waxy cuticle again, and on both sides we have the epidermis. Here's where things get interesting. Right under the top layer of epidermis, we have the palisade mesophyll. This is a bunch of very densely packed cells. They capture a lot of sunlight. Remember, I said leaves are flat and broad to capture sunlight. This is where most of it gets caught. 
and we have some xylem and phloem, then the spongy mesophyll. This has a lot of holes in it used for capturing gases. Remember, plants need carbon dioxide to perform photosynthesis and will also release oxygen. You notice that there are some openings here in the epidermis on the lower part. This allows carbon dioxide in and oxygen out. But here's the trouble. Water can also evaporate through these. Let's see how that works. See, the opening is known as stoma, stomata, plural, have these guard cells. When there's lots of water, they will open up like so. But when there's not much, they'll kind of squeeze shut. But here's the interesting thing. This allows for a process known as transpiration, which moves water throughout the plant. If you recall, water forms hydrogen bonds and has this property known as cohesion, which means water sticks to each other. Kind of like this. If we have a water molecule right here, it'll attach to another water molecule over here through hydrogen bonding. So let's say we have a leaf. Here is a generic leaf. And we pull out a water molecule. That's attached to pretty much every other water molecule in the xylem. So when we pull one out, it pulls up all the other ones. I might go, okay, but what if your plant's 200 feet high? That's a lot of water to be pulling up. Well, water also has probably known as adhesion, if you may recall. So in addition for every water molecule sticking to each other, they're also stuck to the sides of the xylem. So the entire plant is supporting the chain of water movement and allows water to move throughout the plant. It's sucking it like a straw. It's coming out the top and pulling stuff up from the bottom of your plant. And that's how materials actually get transported. To recap, the three major structures in plants are roots, stems, and leaves. Roots have at the bottom a root cap, which is a bunch of densely packed cells, very hard, that secretes a lubricant so that the root can move through the ground. Immediately above that, the meristem, which produces new cells. These will end up in the zone of elongation, and ultimately it's the zone of maturation, where they become actually what they're going to do, xylem, phloem, epidermis, so on and so forth. Now, in monocots, when we start looking at a root, on the outside we have the epidermis, which provides protection, then the cortex, which provides storage cells, the endodermis, which defines the steel, the center of the plant. Inside the steel, immediately in a ring, we have the pericycle, which allows the thickening of the root. Then, in monocots, we'll have the phloem, which, again, provides transportation for nutrients and minerals. Then, in no ring, smaller than the phloem, we have the xylem, water, transport, and in the center, dicots don't have this, the pith, which is a lot like the cortex. In dicots, we have the epidermis, same as ever, cortex, endodermis, and then the pericycle again, which allows thickening. But here's where things get interesting. The xylem is arranged in a cross, and everything in between the arms is flow. Next up, stems. Stems have these things called vascular bundles. It's cortex, and in the center, xylem, phloem, and some more ground tissue, parenchyma, just like the cortex. In monocots, we get this kind of haphazard spreading of bundles of vascular tissue. Everything in between is cortex or method. In dicots, we have vascular bundles spread around in a ring. As for leaves, leaves are what perform photosynthesis. They're flat and broad. On top, they have a waxy cuticle that prevents water loss. On the bottom, they're not as waxy. See, on top, we have the palisade mesophyll directly underneath the epidermis which captures a lot of sunlight. On the bottom, we have spongy mesophyll, which allows oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out through openings called the stoma. The stoma have guard cells. When there's lots of water, the guard cells are open. When there's little water in the plant, the guard cells are shut. How does this help the plant? Well, when the guard cells are open, carbon dioxide can go in, oxygen can go out, allowing for photosynthesis, and water can also evaporate out, which pulls out all water in the plant, sucking it almost like through a straw. Because water coheres, sticks to other water molecules, it creates this huge chain of water. So when one water molecule evaporates, all the other are pulled up after it. Also, the water molecules will adhere to the sides of the xylem so that not all the strain is placed on one water molecule. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.